In this tutorial, we're going to look at um, using Photoshop to create a vignette um, on a photograph. Now, a vignette effectively uh, will fade your image out to the edges of the frame, either to white or black or to some other colour. Um, it's very common in, um, in old photos, uh, certainly was a technique used in, in old school portrait photos. And um, that's what we're going to work on. So I'm going to open Photoshop. I'm going to take um, a portrait of myself. Um, now I'm going to do one that I was taken with a webcam and used in another tutorial rather than a, um, a more formal one at this stage. So I'm going to drop that into Photoshop. And OK, here we are, a ter rather terrible photo taken with a, uh, a webcam. Now, one of the reasons I might want to use a vignette on this is to um, hide some of the um, distracting backgrounds. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer because I like to work on multiple layers in this. So, new layer should be, there we go, new layer. Now, I'm going to use my... Um, selection tools here. So I don't want a rectangle, so I'm going to right click. I'm going to bring up the elliptical marquee tool. And I need to look at this control here, feather. Um, if I was to do this without feather, I'd get a perfectly sharp edge, and um, which is really be more making a frame rather than a vignette. So a vignette is about fading from um, the photo into a, another tone. So I'm going to set my um, pixels for my vignette for this one as a reasonable size photo. So I'm going to select it um, at oh, 100, 100 pixels. See what happens. Um, this is actually an iPhone photo, realizing that rather than a, a webcam, so it's a bit higher quality. Now I'm now going to create my um, oval sort of shape for my vignette. So I'm going to create an oval. Now you can see it's flipped off the frame there. That's all right. I can just move it into here. Excellent. Now at present, I've got in here selected. I need to change it so it's the outside area. So I'm going to go to select and I'm going to hit inverse. Now you'll see my marching ants all around the outside and there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my um, paint bucket, my, yeah, paint bucket tool. Now um, I may have to change my um, workspace here. Uh, I can add this into photography if I wanted to, but it just doesn't appear in photography. So I'm going to flip it over to essentials. Now that's something you need to get used to doing too, is um, flipping between workspaces. It can be quite handy. Now if I right click, there's my paint bucket tool. I've got my um, active color set as white, which is what I want to use for this particular exercise. And I'm going to click and it's going to come out as, there we go. There is my vignette to a white. You can see it fading off. Now, I'll just get command command D to undo my um, marching ants. Now, back to here. I've got to make a decision: is that too sharp a change, a fade, so it's sort of fading from there to about there, or do I want to change? Um, or am I ha happy with that? Now, if I'm not happy with it, I go back and redo it. Uh, if I am, well, that, that's actually given me a vignette to white quite comfortably. And if I turn the background image off, um, you can see the, uh, the little checker pattern in the background. So they very simply how to do a vignette. Now, I'll just do it again, and um, but I'll use a greater, um, what do you call it, um, greater feathering. So I'm going to do undo deselect. I'm just going to undo the paint back and undo select inverse. And do move selection. So I've, I've just gone back step by step. You, you could literally start a new layer. So I'm going to go to my mask again. So I've still got my feather at 100. I wonder if I made it to be 
200. Now the amount of feather is going to depend on the res original resolution of the image. If it's a very low resolution image, um, maybe 50 pixels might be enough. But the higher the resolution, the more pixels you need for your feather. So there's my um, lip. There we go. I'm going to move that to there. That'll do me. Again, remember it's select and inverse to get the outside area. Paint back a tool and there we go. So that fades it out a little bit more. It takes a bit longer. Um, I quite like that too. Or I'm going to hit undo. If I flip my active color to a black, there we go, I can fade it into a black if I want to as well. Now that's going to depend on how you want to use it and what you want to do with it. But that's very simply how to create a, um, a vignette in Photoshop and um, use it to just fade out the background of a photo. I haven't done anything with the photo at this point, just created the vignette.